Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to be talking about sawhorses, and we'd like to thank Caden for liking and sharing the podcast. And you can check out our home improvement ebooks. They're called Home Improvement Solutions What Every Homeowner Should Know, books 1 through 10 on Amazon. Sawhorses have been used for hundreds of years to support and hold work at a comfortable height. In the 1300s in France, young carpenters would have to build a pair of sawhorses when they started with a new company and the design complexity and strength of the sawhorses would be judged and it would help determine their starting position in a company. Hmm. Some historians say the French used the sawhorse design to create some of the first barricades to control crowds and traffic in the 1500s. <laughs> a great basic tool to have if you're doing a lot of home improvement projects is a pair of sawhorses. You can use them to support wood that you're cutting to size. You can put a couple of 2 by 4s on them and use it as a drying rack for freshly painted trim or other parts. If you don't have a workbench or if you need another surface, you can create a temporary workbench by putting a sheet of plywood or a door on top of a couple of sawhorses. And now you can set up a table saw, a miter saw, or a tile cutter. Or you can use it like a bench for a router or a sander. And sawhorse is also great if you're trying to keep people off your driveway if you've just resealed your blacktop, mm -hmm. or if you want to keep people away from a post that you've just set into fresh concrete. Have they sold this a pair? Like some, yeah, some are and some aren't. So I went to a few home centers this week mm -hmm. and did some shopping, and some are sold individually, but a lot of them were sold as a pair. And a lot of the weight ratings are, when you're looking at the label, you need to look at it because the weight rating for most that I saw were for a pair of sawhorses. Interesting. And if you do have a good weight rating on your sawhorses, you can use them to support scaffolding planks. And that's one of the things you should be comparing when you're shopping for sawhorses is the weight limit. I guess you should describe them. What do they look like? So a basic sawhorse has four legs. You have two legs on one side connected with a beam on top to two legs on the other side. Although there are three-legged sawhorses. <laughs> How cool is that? Super cool. If you like woodworking, you can build your own sawhorses out of wood. And there's a lot of different designs you can see online. For simplicity, I like the design I saw in Popular Mechanics by Mark Clement of My Fix It Up Life. He has an I-beam design for the top beam. And by angling the top of the legs under the top of the beam and over the side of the bottom of the beam, you create the angle for the legs without having to cut an angle into the wood on the legs. So you can build two sawhorses out of five eight-foot two-by-fours, and all you need are straight cuts. Huh. And then you can add braces to the legs if you want to increase the weight limit or the weight that it'll hold. Okay. When I was a young guy and so just... a while ago. Yes, years ago, uh, when I was investing in real estate, my business partner and I used a large four-door car with a big trunk as our work car to haul all our supplies. And since we didn't have a lot of room or extra space, we used metal sawhorse brackets to build sawhorses at each project. So we cut two-by-fours for the legs and pushed them into the brackets and then cut a two-by-four for the top beam. When you spread the legs apart, the brackets had teeth that would grab that top post and lock it all together. Huh. And then when we were done at a project, we pulled out the wood and threw the brackets back into the back of the trunk. So it worked great. Very so did you keep the wood, too? Uh, sometimes we would, yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes there just wasn't room for all our supplies hmm. in the back of the trunk, so it really depended. But they're still making them. I saw those at the home centers I went to, and the weight rating is four of the brackets I saw. It was 400 pounds per pair. Okay. There are other types of brackets you can buy and add your own lumber. I saw one called the McCoy. It's capital M-C, capital C-O-Y, super steel sawhorse bracket. It's a solid piece of metal. You would cut 2 by 4 legs and a 2 by 6 top beam and push it all into the bracket. And this is rated at 4,000 pounds. Wow, that's a big difference. Yeah, amazing compared to the clamp style. 
If you like a wood sawhorse and have the room to store a pre-built non-collapsible sawhorse, there's a company called Burrow Brand. It's B-U-R-R-O, capital B-R-A-N-D. They have wood sawhorses that you can get at home centers or buy online. These are stackable. Their large sawhorse is 28 and a half inches high and it will support 2,000 pounds per pair. And they also have wood folding sawhorses and a knockdown version, which huh. is pretty cool. Many sawhorses will fold flat or have collapsible legs for storage or transportation. Most of the plastic sawhorses I saw will fold flat and have a lower shelf that gives it more stability and also gives you a little extra storage while you're working on a project. Hmm. Most of the metal sawhorses have legs that fold up into that top beam. Some will have braces across the legs, some don't. So I would look at the weight rating as a guide for the stability, especially if you're going to be working with large sheets of wood and putting it on your sawhorses and pulling them off. Right. With some of the metal sawhorses, you have the option to screw a 2x4 or a 2x6 to the top, and that's going to help prevent damage to the sawhorse or your tools. So if you're cutting through sheets of plywood, for example, rather than your saw blade hitting the top of your metal sawhorse, right. it's nice to have that wood buffer on top Okay. so you can cut through that. It doesn't damage it, and then you can just replace that over right. time. The plastic folding sawhorses are popular, and at one of the home centers I went to, they had five different types of plastic. One was plastic with metal legs. One had a replaceable top beam that was wood. I thought that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. The plastic sawhorses can look very similar, but I would check the weight limits and the features. One model I looked at was all plastic. The top beam was smooth, and it had no extra features. This had a weight rating of 500 pounds per pair, and it cost right around $45. Another plastic folding sawhorse right next to it, and was the same price, had a bottom shelf when you opened it up. It had hooks on the legs to hold extension cords out of the way when you're cutting. Hmm. So I thought that was handy. And this one had a rating of 1,200 pounds per pair. Wow. What else did you see at the store? Another style had extensions that pull out of the top beam to make it wider. Another one had adjustable feet. Works. It's Why would you need adjustable feet? So if you're working outside and you're on an uneven surface, or oh. if you're working, you know, maybe on a sidewalk or, you know, wherever you want so your... So that would also be outside. <laughs> yes. For uneven surfaces, Cindy. Thank you. Works, W-O-R-X, has a plastic folding sawhorse that comes with two bar clamps. So that's a nice feature. And their sawhorses had a weight rating of 1,000 pounds per pair, and the clamps had a 300-pound clamping force. Hmm. A Stanley plastic folding sawhorse I saw with metal legs had a weight rating of 2,900 pounds per pair, and those legs were also adjustable for uneven surfaces. The top beam had two grooves in it to hold a 2x4 on edge, and that's going to give better support to a sheet of plywood or other material when you're cutting. Mm -hmm. So you can run 2x4s across the pair of sawhorses. Right. So I thought that was pretty cool. 2x4s held in those grooves make a very stable drying rack for painted work so the wood doesn't shift when you're placing or removing parts off the wood, especially if you have larger pieces like wood shutters or cabinet doors. And most of the plastic or metal sawhorses I saw with those 2x4 grooves hold the 2x4s above the top of the beam of the sawhorse. So that's nice if you're cutting through, let's say, sheets of plywood where you're worried about hitting the top of the beam, especially if you have a metal sawhorse. Mm -hmm. But if you want to make a more secure temporary workbench, you can measure the depth of the groove on the beam and then use an angle finder tool or make a template with cardboard of the angle under the notch that the legs form, and then cut that out on the bottom of your 2x4s. And then the 2x4 will set flush with the top of the sawhorse, and now you can cut a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood or MDF and have a very stable work surface. Huh. Then if you screw that wood sheet to the 2x4s, you can make it even more stable, and you can just lift that off, and now you have a reusable worktop that's easy to store against a wall. Mm, exciting. In home centers, you can usually find 2 foot by 4 foot or 4 foot by 4 foot sheets already pre-cut, which is easier to bring home if you don't have a truck. The most popular sheets you'll find at a home center is going to be plywood, MDF, or OSB. 
I don't like the OSB. It's rough. It's easy to get splinters if you're moving it around and it absorbs water. Mm -hmm. MDF is a good work surface, but it's heavier than plywood. I like the plywood. It makes a good surface and it comes in quite a few different grades. Okay. The ancient Egyptians and Greeks figured out if you took thin sheets of wood and you alternated the grain pattern and glued them together, that you could make a very solid building material. Hmm. And one of the first patents for plywood was in 1797. <laughs> An old door is another good work surface on top of a pair of sawhorses, especially a solid wood door. So I would keep any old doors if you replace one, you know, if it's smooth. And 80 inches by 30 inches is a good size to work on or use as a bench. And with a sheet of plywood, don't have your sawhorses all the way to the ends. Set them in a foot or two on each side for more stability. Okay. If you're making a workbench with your sawhorses and you're doing a lot of projects by yourself, you can use wood clamps to hold your work or you can drill holes in your work surface for bench dogs. What's that? So these are wood, plastic, or metal pegs that you put into the hole that you drilled on your bench top and now you can wedge your work against it. Mm -hmm. So you can have a roll of holes for wood pegs and if you're doing a lot of projects where you need to hold a 2x4, for example, to cut it to length, you could have one dog at the end of the board on your side and one dog in front of the board on the opposite side close to the end where you're cutting. You can push against that front dog and it'll wedge it between them so you can cut very safely. Exciting. It, <laughs> you can check it out online. It's a cool way to make your work surface more versatile and safe. And I'll get into dogs, hold fast, and clamps when we talk about workbenches in the future. If you're not using a sheet of wood or a door as a work surface when you're cutting sheets of plywood or other sheet goods, you should use multiple 2x4s so the work that falls away is supported when it's cut because you don't want to use just two 2x4s. You can end up cracking or damaging your cut piece or it could cause a kickback with a circular saw. So how many should you use? Four, at least four. <laughs> Preferably six. All right. And if you plan on cutting a lot of wood sheets, having three sawhorses or even four sawhorses will make the job easier. Who has room for that? Or, <laughs> well, the plastic ones fold up really nice. Or if you're cutting a lot with a table saw or a miter saw, you can use those extra sawhorses to support and catch long pieces of wood. Okay. You should compare the height of sawhorses when you're shopping. At the home centers I looked at, they ranged from 26 inches tall to 40 inches. One model I looked at could adjust from 25 inches to 40 inches, mm. and I find 30 inches to be a comfortable height to work at, but depending on your height, the tools you're using, or the projects, you might want it taller. Okay. You can add carpet to the top of your sawhorses, and that's going to help protect painted or delicate surfaces. Carpenters call this putting a saddle on your horse. <laughs> And if you add a wood top to a metal sawhorse, make it wider than the metal beam and then screw it or bolt it in place. And if you have it wider, now you have an area that you can clamp small pieces in place with. Okay. When you add a wood top, you can also drill holes in it for bench dogs and now it'll help you secure pieces of wood. Right. Some top rated sawhorses are from Works, W-O-R-X, DeWalt, Tough Built, Rigid, R-I-D, G-I-D, Stanley, 2x4 Basics, it's the number 2, X, the number 4, Basics, Hitachi, H-I-T-A-C-H-I, -I, Craftsman, and Burrow Brand. Do you have anything else to add? When you're shopping for sawhorses, I would compare the height, is it adjustable, the weight ratings, the material, portability, and the features. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, CastBox, or your favorite podcast app. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our eBooks, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, Books 1 through 10, soon Book 11 on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. 
You can follow Cindy on Twitter at Fixit Co-host, and you can follow us on Instagram, Fixit Home Improvement. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Do you have a